Hi everyone, welcome to the most popular series that I do on the YouTube channel, which is the stocks that I'm buying into June. So these are the stocks that I bought from the 1st of May to the 1st of June, and I've done this series for many years, I think over six, seven years, and it's always my most popular video. This is for me to keep up transparency with you guys, so you know what stocks I'm buying, what I'm selling. I'm not selling out anything quietly in the background, whereas a lot of YouTubers tend to sell things out quietly in the background or all of a sudden pop up and go, oh, you know that stock that skyrocketed six months ago? I didn't buy that one. There's always these like hidden buys and sells. There's nothing like that on here. We're transparent. We talk about everything we're buying and selling. And as well as that, I've done this all through when I've been doing YouTube and especially through the bear market. You know, it's been a really tough time and some YouTubers have kind of given up. But yeah, even through the worst times in that, that bear market, which was coming up to a year ago now, I was still going, this is what I'm buying. This is what I'm buying. So yeah, it just keeps up that transparency. Uh, there wasn't actually any stock sold this month. It was all buys and we'll go through these here. And also I'll do my UK one in a few days time because I know you guys do like the UK version as well. But let's get started. So all I ask is if you can smash the like button, that's absolutely amazing. It does take a little while to put these videos together. And if you can and you're new around here, subscribe. We're so close to 14,000 subscribers. I said we'll do a live Q&A session as a special for the 14,000 subscribers when we do get there. And if you do want to join the Patreon, this is where I post two exclusive videos a week. There's a Discord with 500 members on to talk about stocks, including myself. But there's even some better members on that Discord that have great bits of information to share. And it's only £5 a month, so you can see exclusive, exclusive videos like this one here like the stock request that we do it's very good for the five pound and it supports the channel it's only the price of a pint and i think what you do get on there is worth it and also if you want some free shares join the link in the description below for trading 212 let's get started onto these stocks so number one paypal this is a stock that i am going very very heavy on at the moment and you guys on the patreon and discord when i post my buy and sell alerts you guys know how much PayPal has been on that list at the moment at $63 even it was actually yeah 52 close of $58 we actually broke into the $50 range I've been buying and buying and buying PayPal the reason why I'm buy, been buying PayPal is I'm getting the likes of Netflix and you know Meta when Meta was down everyone said it was a terrible company at them sort of levels I'm getting them vibes again and look how well that's uh, done from only a year ago I'm getting the likes of the Netflix you know people saying about the competition and uh, we saw how much that skyrocketed Facebook we saw how much people talked about TikTok and how much that's going to affect them and I was like this is crazy and then obviously that's rather up Say, seeing the same now with PayPal seeing that people are justifying the drop in PayPal going well uh, Apple Pay is coming around and it's like you know the, the, there's more there's enough room in this space for more than just Apple Pay and there's also a lot of other things that pay, goes on at PayPal than just the, the transaction side of it so yeah I'm thinking this uh, this has been a drop that's absolutely being blown out of proportion now without doubt when it was uh, in 2021 and it was 200 300 dollar stock it was crazy high valuations but in the last kind of year when that stock has now started to dip into the 70 60 dollar range i do really like this one so i am trying to get my average lower and lower on this one and i am trying to make it a very big position now paypal at the moment and not many people actually know this is that at the moment it looks 27 times earnings and you're like well it's a little bit high at the moment and that's what everyone keeps saying about it well actually when you look on a forward p basis you're only picking up paypal for 13 times earnings you should not be picking paypal up at 13 times earnings this is a company that should be a premium company we talk about paypal here and it's 13 times earnings and the reason why people get confused is because actually when you do look at the drop they've recently had a bit of a drop in the profitability as you can see here the profit dropped around about to two billion now this is not like paypal and this is where the profit is actually going to start recovering after a lot of these restructuring costs that have started going on in the business and we're actually going to see the company by the end of the year putting 3.8 billion and by 2024 put 4.6 billion in, according to simply wall street analysts and that will go back to what they've previously kind of done on the profit range now like we said we talk about paypal here guys i mean look at the growth and the past performance of paypal that it's not they had this is a top quality business look at the historic performance and going forward it looks like this company is going to continue to grow at very good rates we're talking high single digit percentage growth rates now in the recent earnings the recent earnings were actually quite strong and this actually what seemed to have caused the drop in paypal recently when you look at the recent earnings you can see a net revenues of 7.04 billion growing at nine percent this is in a, an economy environment that we talk about in this weakened economy environment with these high interest rates and inflations and the company's still pulling out nine percent growth which is absolutely amazing and ten percent on an fx neutral basis which is so good 
Payment volume was up. You can see here that the gap operating income was up 19%. Like we said, we talked about the recovery and the profitability as well. You can see the gap EPS was up 33%. And going forward, they are expecting Q2 to grow at 6.5 to 7% and on a spot basis, 7.5 to 8%. So this is still very good growth for the environment that we're in and I expect that we could actually see PayPal in the longer term push to 8-9% revenue growth. This is crazy for a company at forward times earnings of 13 here. They've got a share repurchase as well of 4 billion shares. You know, this is a great thing. They're using a lot of this profitability to go buy back shares. And when you're buying shares back at $63, that is really good that you want to see. And also when you've seen the actual CEO pick up a ton of shares uh, at $76 and he's actually potentially going to be leaving in the next 12 months, that's also a really positive sign as well. And maybe that's what what's causing the share price to be a little bit flat at the moment is the potential change of the CEO. Maybe it's the potential that active counts were a little bit flat on the growth, but we've seen before, PayPal have said a year ago they're shifting the activity from focusing on that user growth. What they're actually trying to focus on is the other parts of the business and maximizing the potential of the customers they already have. And you've seen the growth of the likes of Braintree. Braintree, their unbranded platform is growing at really good rates. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, I'll have to go through the transcripts, but I think it's like 30% growth. You've got the likes of the buy now, pay later that's rapidly growing as well. That's gonna be a massive growth driver for them in the next few years. All these new parts of the companies that are growing rapidly are really good to be focusing on. And then you start looking at the metrics as well. I mean, historically, this is so cheap. You know, total price to revenue. Uh, if you look at a total enterprise EBITDA, nine, it's on around in the 20s. Free cash flow is down at 12 times earnings and almost in the 30 or 40s. This is crazy, crazy low for PayPal at the moment. And uh, I think this is a really, really attractive stock. Next one is Hims. I've not bought Hims for a very long time. I'd say that I've not bought Hims for maybe over a year-ish. I think it probably would have been around this October time that I bought the last bit of shares in Hims and hers. Now, since then, the share price has been on an absolute rally. It is up over 100% since that time frame. And in fact, at one point, it was up 160%. And I was taking 100% profit in this company. Now, the company is having a little bit of a dip at the moment and the stock is down around 23%. And I'm buying more shares. I am averaging up massively on this company. The reason why that I'm averaging up is, I've said this before, I don't really care about showing off. I, I could potentially show off really good returns go oh look i'm up so and so percent on this stock if there's for me if there's chance to make more money on it i'll keep averaging up on that position and i'm doing that with hymns and airs because i'm looking and thinking from that time frame from october to may all i've seen is this, this company be one of my best financially performing stocks so you give me a dip on this and i think the stock is still quite cheap I'm going to be buying some more shares in Hims and Hairs, and that's what I did. So Hims and Hairs is a telehealth company. Uh, they recently launched the app, and you can go on the app and get obviously telehealth care. This is obviously to save time rather than going out and potentially going to see someone in person, and also to be more affordable as well. And especially when you look at the younger generation, that would be something they would be looking to go at and rather than actually interact in person. And also, also we know the cost of healthcare in America. And this has led them for their great platform to have very good subscriber growth as you can see here and growing revenue and also lifting up their profitability as you can see here in the recent quarter they grew subscribers substantially which I thought was going to start dropping this year. Revenue growth which once again growed rapidly and I thought once again this would be lower into the more 50% range this year. And we talked about a company that used to be negative on adjusted EBITDA and now is actually putting adjusted EBITDA growth in as well, which is really good. So you got a company driving up revenue and also driving up the profitability as well. And these are currently the markets that they're in with potential new markets coming in. Also, when you look at women's health, dermatology, and also mental health as well. And they're looking at some new markets that they could potentially enter in. And you look here, there's potentially a hundred million still potential market of the US population that can enter in. So there's still major growth categories for them to move into. When you look at the longer term picture and you look Look at the revenue growth year over year just look at the growth that's been driven up by the platform here as well as the revenue growth going forward and like i said on adjusted ebitda they have now turned adjusted ebitda profits profitable as well so this is so good they're currently not losing any more money they set out some of their longer term targets and you can see here for financial year 23 they're now projecting 40 54 to 58 percent revenue growth now knowing what hymns and hairs do this could potentially easily end up in the 60s maybe even the 70s and looking at what happened in q1 potentially the 80s, which is unbelievable if they can do that. Because if you look at the moment, they did 80 plus percent in the first quarter. They're forecasting probably going to come in the higher side of 80% in Q2. 
it's very easy to see them doing more than this, what they're projecting here. And it's just even the same again, you could see them potentially if they come in that 7 million range, they could be even on the high side of just Adiba as well. And we're talking about very good amounts of EBITDA being posted there. On the long-term targets, you can see here, they're going to try to get to a just EBITDA margin of 20 to 30%. Hold the gross margins in the 70% and they're going to aim for 1.2 billion to 100 million of adjusted EBITDA. I think they'll be actually higher than the 1.2 billion by 2025 because when you look at the growth they currently have, that would suggest they're going to slow down to very, very slow growth in the next coming two years. I don't think that's going to happen either. And really, you look at the peak of the stock when it was around $11 and the share price drop has been dropping since these earnings. And you look at the earnings, the revenue grew 88%, beat by 11 million. You can see here they raised the guidance, they raised the adjusted EBITDA guidance as well. And look at the beat on the second quarter revenue, 200 plus million compared to 183. Oh, very, very good beat. So you're looking and thinking there's no way this company should be dropping. I think the main reason why the company is dropping is just a few people are taking profit on it and I think this is just giving a buying opportunity. So I did buy a bit more hymns and hairs. Next one is in mode. So same again, one of my favorite stocks, one of my stocks that's been very good performing. I started buying this stock in June 2020. Uh, since that time frame, the stock is up around about nearly 100% since that time frame. But I've been averaging up, averaging up, averaging up again on this company because they just keep absolutely smashing it. Same again, 16 times earnings on a forward basis. It's, I think it's a 12 or a 13. It shouldn't be these sort of levels for an in mode because this company is delivering huge. Now, this company, in case you don't know, they basically make non-invasive uh, products. So basically, if it's to potentially work on your face, body and skin, for example, and it's to work on the appearance and maybe not go potentially under the knife if you wanted some work doing it, which is quite attractive to people that don't want to go into un, under the knife. It would be something that you can go in, get it done and leave on the day with no hassle. And that obviously probably would be one thing that puts a lot of people off. And this is growing absolutely rapidly at the moment. And I've actually know a few people that work with these products and they say as well it's very good as well so that gives me a lot of confidence and i've got to say the only problem i actually have with in mode as a business is that they are actually that good that i actually question the financials like i don't understand how a company can be at 16 times earnings or 12 times on the forward basis when they're delivering the numbers that they are doing uh, you know the product is legit it's got good reviews and i'm thinking how i, I just can't believe how low it is and um, so they brought out the recent q1 earnings and once again uh, unbelievable here uh, you'll see here they came in the range of uh, 105 million convert versus the consensus of 100 million. Uh, the non-gap earnings came in at 50 cents compared to the 0.46, which once again is absolutely amazing. So really good earnings that recently come in. Um, you look at the growth of the business. I mean, just look, at let's, that's the future growth. I mean, it's going to continue. The company's going to continue at probably 20 plus percent revenue growth here. Once again, 13 times earnings for this is insane. You're looking at the, I mean, just look at that. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, they're throwing off really good amounts of uh, profit. Um, you can see probably by the end of the year, they're going to be putting nearly 200 million in profit in. Unbelievable the amount of profit that they're putting in at the moment. All of that is heading to the balance sheet, which they currently have a very clean balance sheet, as you can see here, no debt on there. And this is probably my only criticism that I do have is that they currently sit on 574 million of cash. It's a bit like, can you not use that cash for something else? Can you pay a dividend? Can you start pay, buying back shares? And they actually said that they're actually looking for an acquisition. If they don't make an acquisition this year, which is a little bit tricky for them to do because they don't want to ruin the, uh, the, co the, pro the company and the product they currently do have, which throws off you know so much good profitability. If they can't find it, then they are going to look at share buybacks and dividends. My question would be just right now while you're waiting, just throw off a 20 billion buyback. That would make a lot of sense. And that's my only criticism with uh, in mode at the moment. But yeah, obviously unbelievable when you look at the valuation, you know, you're picking this company up at 16 times earnings, it's grown at 20 plus percent. It's got this profit growth, revenue growth. It's got the balance sheet. And if they carry on growing uh, the products that they do currently have, and especially with the growth of international, it's going to be very good for them going forward. So that's uh, that's one in particular that I do really like. Next one is Top Golf. So Top Golf has had a little bit of a wobble. Now, since it's had the bit of a wobble, it has started to recover a little bit, but it's nowhere near the, where it was pre-earnings. So there was a drop-off earnings. 
Now, originally, um, before we get onto the drop of earnings, I bought um, Top Golf Callaway um, because of the Top Golf brand. Uh, I've always tracked Callaway when it was a public company, but it never really interested me because the golf clubs um, and the clothing didn't really have the growth to kind of attract me in. Now that they, they acquired Top Golf, and Top Golf, a very easy business model to get, kind of get your head around. They stick up these venues where you go play Top Golf, and also you can go for maybe parties, events, food and drink. Very, very good. And it, it very much reminded me of the golfing version of Hollywood Ball. And Hollywood Ball has been a very good UK investment, as any of you guys that have followed me for three years. Uh, once again, you know, this stock is one that's been a, a very good performer for me. It's up over 64%. Uh, I think I'm up 50%. I've been averaging up once again on this one. Like I said, I do like to buy stocks that I do really love, if, even if they keep going up. Uh, firstly, for me, I'm picking up uh, something like a 6% dividend yield on this one because of the average that I do have as well. So it's, it's been a really good performer for me. And I, I basically like, I'm getting just deja vu, but uh, for Top Golf. And the more they just keep opening up these small venues, which I think will do very well, they're always very busy. Uh, the biggest criticism that Top Golf actually have, if you look at the reviews, is that it just takes so long to get a bay, which is probably not the worst thing to have. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to own this. Um, they said they was gonna IPO uh, back in 2020, before the whole CV situation, which uh, they valued at four billion. Uh, then actually, probably because of the whole CV situation, uh, bought the company actually for 2.6 billion. So I was like, okay, I'm getting now a major brand, the clothing brand, and Top Golf in this company, and they've got Top Golf for a steal. I was like, I'm going to have to buy some shares in this one. I think this stock, in my opinion, is a, is a double up in the next five years as they open up more and more Top Golf venues. Um, but if you look at the recent earnings, the recent earnings were actually really good, uh, but the stock did drop 17% off the earnings. Now, the reason why the Wall Street didn't like it, even though they beat by EPS, uh, even though the revenue beat and they grew 12.5% year over year, and the clothing brand was in particular very strong in this quarter, and the Top Golf was still very strong in this quarter, and the Top Golf venue profitability numbers uh, and return metrics were improved as well during this quarter. And um, what they said is that if you actually dig into the quarter, they downgraded their EPS guidance. Now, if you actually go through the conference call, they gave a lot of detail onto this. Basically, they said that uh, since the start of this year, they've seen weakness in the corporate market because of the worrying factors is, is the economy and pullback of company spend, which you've seen so many companies pull back, uh, pull back on spend at the moment. Their corporate business, which I think makes up something like 20% of their revenue, I think it is. If you actually go on the transcript, you'll be able to find it. Um, that has seen a weakness, and that's why they pull back a little bit on the revenue, and also why they pull back a, uh, a bit on the profitability as well. So I was like, fair enough. You know, We've seen so many companies that are doing cuts, you can understand that having a bit of a pullback, but in the long term, it doesn't really affect the business. But then uh, Wall Street decided, you know what, actually we're gonna pull this uh, back massively. I think this is crazy because I can understand the weakness and I think that will recover like it did after the whole CV situation and I think in the long term th there's no change in the business model here so I, I did really like the drop in here and I was buying some shares and I might nibble some more a little bit we'll see what happens so yeah I was a big fan of the drop in this one the next one was Walgreens now the frustrating thing with Walgreens I always said I wanted to try get it below $30 and it has had a little bit of a weakness, but in the last couple of days, it has had a little bit of a rally up here, but it's still quite low down at the moment when you do look in the context of things. So $31, I don't think it's too bad. I, I do prefer like 29, 28, but I, I do like it a little bit lower, but you're picking Walgreens up a 6% dividend yield for this company at the moment. And on a trailing basis, it's actually five times earnings and the four basis it's currently six times earnings as well, which isn't too bad. Now, the reason why the company is so low and the dividend yield so high and the share price has been uh, really declining since 2017, let's say, um, is because the company has really been mismanaged. If we have a look at the past performance, you can see here that since 2017, the revenue growth has been really flat. The profit as well has been really flat and even declining. And that's where they've struggled to competition. The likes of Amazon as well, rapidly growing. And the company's not really adapted at all. And it's been a bit of a badly run company. And I think that I am buying this for the high dividend yield, the low valuation, and the potential they turn around the business and the share price will go up because of that. So I'm buying this as a, as a turnaround play. So first of all, new CEO comes in. Ros Brewer comes in on the 15th of March, 2021. And there's a clear plan now on how she's gonna turn around this business going forward. First of all, investment into Village MD. Gonna be going into value-based primary care. Once again, massive, massive market. They're gonna increase the number of care practices uh, 
from 600 by 2025 and 1000 by 2027. This is having these primary care locations here. And imagine you go see more affordable care and then afterwards they go, oh, you need to go get so-and-so. And then you can pop into Walgreens next door. So these tie really well together and also addressing a lot of the health situation currently that is in the US as well. And this part of the business is growing quite well at the moment. And you can see here, Village MD actually before this acquisition was increased its revenue from 217 million in 2017 to 1.3 billion expected in 2021 and since then it's actually grown even more going forward so that's obviously really good the other thing is utilizing its locations so you can now order something and pick it up in 30 minutes which is obviously really good or also you can have delivery which is a one hour delivery and um, obviously this is something that will compete the likes of amazon obviously amazon has been very rapid with the deliveries and if something well, walgreens you'd be thinking well uh, walgreens if, if one hour delivery happens that's obviously what you want if you ill you want something very fast so that's obviously how the competing as well now with Walgreens which is very good so utilizing the stores one hour delivery collection also added in the village MD I think this would be very good direction change for Walgreens onto a level where CVS have been a lot quicker to rotate the business I think that's where Walgreens could be uh, have a little bit of a catch-up and going forward, we should see the company then go back to decent amounts of growth. We should see the profitability start coming back in. They've also sold off a couple of parts of the businesses to just try and strengthen up the balance sheet as well, which I really like. And Ross Brewer seems very confident in the turnaround plan. She actually then bought some shares at $33 uh, on the 29th of March, which is what you want to see. Uh, and she bought 340 k worth of shares, which is a, a really good sign as a, as a shareholder. So yeah, I'm buying this one as a turnaround play. And that's one so far. So I'm not gonna spend too long on this stock just just because I actually made a video five days ago, which was 15 minutes long on why I was buying SoFi. So if you want more information, go check that one out. But I really like SoFi because uh, the, the company has been on my watch list for a while, uh, and then they bought out some really good earnings on the 1st of March. I was like, these are really good. And yet the stock uh, dived like 20% on these earnings. I was like, right, I'm just gonna have to buy it because that's, that's a crazy drop. Um, unfortunately though, since I did start buying this stock um, when it had the drop off earnings, as you can see here, uh, the stock has started to rally and the stock is up 43% and it is actually higher now than previous to the drop off earnings and that was an example I was like it was it was just a drop that didn't make sense and it's a bit frustrating now because I wanted to buy more at this, like below $5 range the only thing is now that it's up so much I'm like oh, I don't know what to, to do really now um, so it just shows you you know it's, it just shows you within a month time Wall Street went it brought a company that can bring out good earnings the stock then decided to dive um, over you know 20% and then in that time frame in, a, in that one time frame, then all of a sudden they decide, actually, these are okay earnings. And then the stock is up 50%. It shows you that, you know, the crazy things go in Wall Street, and that's the prime example. So, yeah, I do own some SoFi. I did buy some shares and missed it, but then it rallied up. So, uh, I, I'm uh, just holding a bit of a smaller position at the moment. So, I'm kind of hoping it goes back into that $5 range so I can pick up some more shares. But, um, yeah, it's crazy what goes on in Wall Street. Hope you enjoyed the video, anyway, guys. If you could, smash the like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. And don't forget, if you want to see some more exclusive content, join the Patreon. And I'll catch you on in a bit.